Autonomous navigation is a core requirement in building intelligent embodied agents. It has been studied in robotics over three decades. We present a large-scale, real-world, empirical study of semantic visual navigation methods on a mobile robot platform. The problem is easy to define. A robot starts in a completely unseen environment and is asked to find an object, let's say a toilet. The robot has access to only a first-person RGB and depth camera and a pose sensor. This task is challenging. The robot requires not only spatial scene understanding of distinguishing free space and obstacles and semantic scene understanding of detecting objects, but also requires learning semantic priors for example, if a human wants to find a toilet in this scene, most of us would choose the hallway because it's the most likely to lead to a toilet. Teaching this kind of common sense or semantic priors to an autonomous agent is challenging. While exploring the scene for the desired object, the robot also needs a long-term episodic memory to remember explored and unexplored areas. Poor spatial understanding leads to collisions. Four semantic exploration priors make the robot pass the couch while looking for a TV. Poor semantic understanding leads to failure in detecting the TV. Poor episodic memory makes it revisit the same corner of the living room. So how do we train autonomous agents capable of efficient navigation while tackling all of these challenges? A classical approach to this problem back projects the depth image into a 3D geometric map, aggregates its height to compute a 2D geometric map, explores the environment with a heuristic like frontier exploration, which explores the closest unexplored region, and uses an analytical planner to reach exploration goals and the goal object as soon as it is in sight. An end-to-end -end learning approach predicts actions directly from raw observations with a deep neural network consisting of visual encoders for image frames, followed by a recurrent layer for memory. Modular learning approaches aim to combine the ability for long-term memory and planning of classical map-based approaches with the ability to learn semantic priors of learning-based methods. The representative method that we evaluate segments objects in the image observation back projects the semantic frame into a 3D semantic map using depth and pose, aggregates its height to compute a 2D semantic map, predicts an exploration goal with a goal-oriented semantic policy as a function of the semantic map and the goal, and reaches it with a planner. While many approaches to navigate to objects have been proposed over the past few years, learned navigation policies have predominantly been evaluated in simulation for example, in the Habitat and AI2 Thor simulators. How well do classical end-to-end -end learning and modular learning approaches perform on a robot? We address this question through a large-scale empirical evaluation of policies to navigate to objects across six unseen homes and six object goal categories. We compare approaches in terms of success rate with a limited budget of 200 robot actions and success weighted by path length, SPL, a measure of path efficiency, both between 0 and 1, higher is better. In simulation, all approaches perform comparably at around 80% success rate. But in the real world, modular learning and classical approaches transfer really well, up from 81% to 90% and 78% to 80% success rates, respectively while end-to-end -end learning fails to transfer, down from 77% to 23% success rate. We illustrate these results qualitatively with one representative trajectory. All approaches start in a bedroom and are tasked with finding a couch. On the left, modular learning first successfully reaches the couch goal. In the middle, end-to-end -end learning fails after colliding too many times. And on the right, the classical policy finally reaches the couch goal after a detour through the kitchen. We find that modular learning is very reliable on a robot with a 90% success rate. Here we can see it finds a plant in a first home efficiently. A 
a chair in a second home, and a toilet in a third. Modular learning improves by 10% real-world success rate over the classical approach. On the left, the goal-oriented semantic exploration policy directly heads towards the bedroom and finds the bed in 98 steps with an SPL of 0.9. On the right, because frontier exploration is agnostic to the bed goal, the policy makes detours through the kitchen and the entrance hallway before finally reaching the bed in 152 steps with an SPL of 0.52. With a limited time budget, inefficient exploration can lead to failure. While classical and modular learning approaches work well in a robot, end-to-end -end learning does not at only 23% success. The policy collides often, revisits the same places, and even fails to stop in front of goal objects when they are in sight. Why does modular learning transfer so well while end-to-end -end learning does not? To answer this question, we reconstructed one real-world home in simulation and conducted experiments with identical episodes in sim and in reality. The end-to-end -end policy directly takes the RGBD frames as input, while the semantic exploration policy of the modular learning approach takes a semantic map as input. The semantic map space is invariant between sim and reality, while the image space exhibits a large gap between sim and reality. In this example, this gap leads to a segmentation model trained on real-world images to predict a bed false positive in the kitchen. The semantic map domain invariance allows the modular learning approach to transfer well from sim to reality. In contrast, the image domain gap causes a large drop in performance when transferring a segmentation model trained in the real world to simulation. And vice versa. If semantic segmentation transfers poorly from sim to reality, it's reasonable to expect an end-to-end -end semantic navigation policy trained on sim images to transfer poorly to real images. Surprisingly, modular learning works even better in reality than simulation. Our analysis indicates that a lot of the failures of the modular learning policy that occur in sim are due to reconstruction errors, which don't happen in reality. Visual reconstruction errors lead to poor semantic segmentation, not your typical TV, right? Physical reconstruction errors lead to noisy navigation meshes, which are hard to navigate for discrete planners that work well in the real world. Detailed analysis reveals that visual reconstruction errors represent 10% out of a total of 19% episode failures for modular learning in SIM. Physical reconstruction errors represent another 5%, and the rest are exploration failures. Surprisingly, real-world failure modes have almost no overlap with simulation failure modes. Failures in the real world are predominantly due to depth sensor errors. While most semantic navigation benchmarks in simulation assume perfect depth sensing, this disconnect in error modes explains the performance gap between sim and reality for modular learning. Here are two common examples. First, when approaching a door at an angle, Noisy depth can block the door on the map. Second, reflections, say in a mirror, can cause collisions. Reflections cause issues for both map-based and map-free methods. For practitioners, the main takeaway is that modular learning is very reliable on a robot with a 90% real-world success rate. For researchers, we identify two key issues. First, there is a large domain gap in RGB images between sim and reality. This means policies relying on these images will likely suffer from a large performance drop when transferred to a robot. We show that leveraging modularity and abstraction in policy architectures is a promising path forward. Second, there is a disconnect between sim and real-world error modes. Unsurprisingly, this means semantic navigation must always be evaluated on real robots for results to be meaningful. We also propose concrete steps forward to close this gap in the paper. Thanks for watching. For more details, please visit the project webpage.